Lava Reef is one of those levels in Sonic games with that certain type of feeling. A sense of foreboding that things are getting real and setting up the final epic sequence. The music of this level is well suited to support this aura, and today we're going to explore some of the ways it does that from a music theory standpoint. Most of the song uses the 671 chord progression that's common in progressive rock, the same one that 8-bit music theory talked about in the Golden Sun video. And on top of this, the shape of the background rhythm melody is particularly relevant to the level's theme. The opening three notes jump from the tonic to the third and back to the tonic before gradually trickling downward. Much like the way lava bursts out of a volcano and then trickles down the sides. Then, when the core melody begins, we have a couple of notes that approach and arrive at the fifth scale degree. Now, if you were going to do this by sticking to notes in the key of A minor, which is the key of the song, you'd hear the 3-4-5 like this. But instead, the song starts at the 4 and goes to the 5, requiring the use of a sharp 4 as the in-between note. I like this decision to cram all the motion into a smaller stretch of tonal space. Plus, using an accidental right in the opening phrase is bold. And I encourage it. Since accidentals stray outside of the standard chord tones of the key, it might have made sense to lay down the foundation first and then after that's established, you start to introduce accidentals that wander outside the core framework. But not in Lava Reef where we get an accidental note right out of the gate. Now, the song's second section starts with what, in isolation, almost comes across as an expression of jubilation. It sounds happy because all it is is, it's a 3-4-5-1 exploration of a C major triad. You could easily excise this melody and transplant it into a happy, stately jingle of an Elizabethan tea party. The way it's used in Lava Reef, though, this phrase is a little taste of jubilation, a suggestion of it, before jumping right back into the more aggressive, rockin' melodies. But I dig that the suggestion of happiness is there, reminding you that you're Sonic and we're gonna dominate this situation no matter how intimidating it gets. Soon after this happy melody, we have not one, but two glissandos back to back. A glissando is when you slide your hand down or up the keys to add some flair. Todd from Breaking Bad can demonstrate for you. Song, they just all the way down, all the way up. Your thumb might hurt a little bit at first. But you... Glissandos are notated on sheet music like this, and here's how they show up back to back in Lava Reef's melody. Pretty funky. There are other Sonic 3 songs featuring glissandos that have quite a bit of fun with them. But we'll get to those in due time in other videos. Then we come to Act 2's music. It's an odd exception to all of Sonic 3 and Knuckles in that the Act 2 song is a totally separate composition from Act 1 rather than a remix or a reimagining. But I did want to point out the unorthodox percussion patterns in the drums because- uh, but, but, Hold on, you were about to let me continue without jumping up to correct me. Which means that after all these years, you did not notice that Act 2's music uses that same descending lava rhythm melody from Act 1 that we talked about earlier. I admit that I did not make this connection as a kid. Without thinking twice about it, I perceived Act 1 and 2 as having totally separate unrelated compositions. And chances are you did too. There's the extra oddity of Hidden Palace using the same music, which mostly just struck me as a laziness whereby Sega didn't want to pay the Union composer's scale to compose a whole new song, especially since audiences were only going to hear it for a handful of seconds in that mini level. Perhaps they learned their lesson from Death Egg Zone in Sonic 2. When you were young, did you ever hang out in the Death Egg hallway so you could just listen to the entire song? Anyways, regarding the subtle compositional overlap between Lava Reef Act 1 and 2, I was surprised that Sonic Retro, of all people, failed to make the connection. When describing the Lava Reef music, Sonic Retro notes, only used for the zone's first act. Second act uses the music for Hidden Palace Zone. Then they drive their public embarrassment further by adding a note for Hidden Palace's music that says, is also used as Lava Reef Zone's Act 2 music. 
No, honey. You could make some version of the same chicken or the egg or the ramen argument for the Doomsday Zone music, which was also used for Knuckles' final boss battle. For most of my life, I just assumed it was written specifically for Doomsday and was recycled for Knuckles' final boss battle. But could it have been the other way around? Maybe? Okay, meanwhile, we're back inside the reef. This is a relatively short song, and it doesn't have a ton of variation in the development of its melody phrasings. But all told, it doesn't even need those things because it has so many other excellent aspects. In Sonic Mania, T. Lopes didn't do a ton to reimagine the song, at least compared to what he did on like things like Green Hill and Chemical Plant, for example. But for Lava Reef Act 1, he does add a few measures that introduce subtle new elements, which in a way is totally understandable due to the original song's brevity. In Act 2, he does the main melody with gorgeous electric guitar bends that sounds like Joe Cetriani played them. And the background rhythms have a really cool Freedom Planet style energy. I still vividly remember back in 1995 finally making it to Lava Reef Zone for the first time, tumbling down those rocks as the music kicked into gear. It was a little bit scary, and I just loved it.